Okay, so what I want to do real quick is a short video that is going to begin the introduction to assembly or our hack system. This video is specifically going over the very basics of the memory system, so the RAM, ROM, registers, a lot of that stuff. Uh, not really how we interface with it, but mostly just setting up the actual architecture for it. That way we can move forward. I think it's been around like eight videos of just raw assembly and kind of that basic idea. So let's just go ahead and get into it and just uh, swap on over. Okay. So, real quick. Everything we've done so far has been setting up the ALU and the RAM essentially. So project two, we had the ALU, project three, we had RAM, and a few, well, obviously other things. We had like registers, which are gonna be very important. Program counter, which is also gonna be very important. But basically it's been setting up low level components that will eventually piece together. Now what we're doing, it's actually going to be writing software, somewhat software. It's basically just raw assembly of the code that will be loaded into our actual computer in the next chapter. So, this again is just a basic overview of the computer. We have some input, some output, and then this whole green square here is basically the computer. We have the CPU, which is comprised of our ALU from Project 2, and some specific registers that we'll get into in just a bit. But these registers live inside the CPU. And then, if you recall, we also made memory specifically we made RAM in project three. And that was a stack of 16,384 registers, all just kind of in one component. That, we need data. What we're doing for this chapter specifically is writing the actual programs. So take a look how the memory works here. We have two different types. We have the instructions and we have actual data. Data was the actual RAM. The instructions are going to be in the ROM. So this is what we're actually writing. Now, in addition to the RAM and the ROM, we also have all the registers. Now, like I said, some of the registers actually create the RAM. So there are many of these. They are slower because they do not exist directly in correspondence with the CPU and the ALU but we can read and write to them and there are a multitude of them. So they're accessed via the actual addresses, so 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, up to 1684. And then we also have a few that reside in the CPU itself. Those, there's two in primary that we care about, and that is the A and the D register. More on that in a bit. These exist directly in the CPU, so they are extremely fast. Now, when it comes to writing our programs, it is going to be in correspondence with the program counter that we made in project three, because every single one is just gonna be this giant stack of instructions that we write. And we traverse it, right at zero, and just iterating through, over and over again until eventually it's told, hey, jump to a new one. So the program counter has a few states. They can either concurrently load the currently loaded in instruction, which basically means, hey, don't change your location, or it can iterate to the next one. It can jump to a new one loaded in, or it can jump back to zero, which is going to be resetting. So we have two different types of branches, which whenever it jumps to a different line completely. We have unconditional branch, and then eventually a conditional branch. So, unconditional is executing instructions rather than acceleration. It is going to jump no matter what. So, here we have go to 13, which is going to be going back to specifically instruction 13. You can view it as a line number when you write in the code, but it's an actual address in ROM. On this right side, we have a symbolic version. So we have the notation of loop here, so it'll jump back to what is going to be called a label. We'll get into that in a different video, but it's a way to actually notify the user in more of a human readable way where we're going to be jumping to. 
So, the last one, I mean, conditional branching. So, same goal, except for instead of jumping no matter what, it needs to meet some specific condition. It's very similar to like an if statement. So, whenever we see comments, you have something like this of if r1 is greater than zero, go to continue. So, you see some pseudocode here of JGT r1 continue. This is just pseudocode. We'll get into how to do that again in a different video. Now, if you look here, this is kind of the symbolic program that we're going to be writing. These are the actual instruction set that we'll have to develop assembly code, but it's going to get all parsed by an assembler and translated to raw binary code. These are all 16 bit values that will eventually be loaded in to the computer that we're writing, the stuff that we did in project two and three, eventually piecing together in project five. And that's how things will be eventually executed but more on that at a different time. So the actual memory system or the hack computer is comprised of these three components. We RAM, ROM, and the individual registers. So RAM, we read, write data memory addressed by our A register. Selected register is going to be RAM A, seen as the M register, more on these registers in just a bit. But essentially, it is our data memory it is going to hold just basically a bunch of raw data. Then we have ROM, which is the read only instruction memory, also addressed by the A register and selected ROM A and contains the current instruction. So this is tied very closely to the program counter. So instead of holding the data like the RAM, it holds all the instructions that we write. And then finally, we have our registers. The data registers, I mean D, exist outside of our memory. The address register A is just like RAM and ROM. And then we have current memory address, which is going to be the M register. If you look at it, the A register and the D register actually kind of exist in a finite sense. They are separate. The memory register, not so much. So. A register here is the address register. If you recall, it is responsible for selecting the current address in RAM and ROM, hence why it's called the address register. Data register exists completely outside of both memories. So if you RAM ROM, it is just its own isolated register, and we use it to load data in as a temporary workspace essentially. So if we need to pull something out of RAM, we can put it in the data register, move somewhere else in the system, and it will still exist. So it's more of a stable form of memory in this case. And the M register is mostly kind of a concept. It is RAM A. So if we load in say zero here, then M register will now be whatever this data is. And if we do RAM 1, then it would be now associated with RAM 1. So this is kind of just a general overview of how the memory system works. It's a very short video, but it's setting up differences of RAM, ROM, and our individual registers. We'll get into how to actually use them in the next video and eventually kind of discuss on how to write assembly, understand what's going on, and how to navigate through our RAM and ROM all accordingly. So this is just a very short video setting up the architecture, setting up the actual more hardware aspects of it and understanding kind of a broad overview of kind of what's happening. So not a very in-depth one, but we'll get into a lot more depth in the next seven or so videos. So hopefully you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.